seminar. I have a pleasure of, to introduce our speaker for today. It's Dr. Kasprowicz, who works at the Warsaw University of Technology. Uh, is a specialist in uh, application of electronics to physics. Uh, he did his PhD at, uh, at the University of Technology and also in collaboration with CERN under the supervision of Professor Romaniuk. And today we'll talk about the open source hardware for quantum applications. Oh, thank you. So uh, today I will try to, <coughs> uh, let's say, bridge the gap between theoretic physicists and practical, practical electronics built for, uh, for, 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 for physicists. Uh, so to start, how to build a practical quantum computer? Actually, there are three promising technologies. Of course, there are much more of them, but these this are the, the most promising which is based on ion traps, on crystals, and on semiconductor qubits. The electronics I built is mainly for ion traps and semiconductor qubits. We have a collaboration with several in the, uh, groups in the US and in, uh, in Europe. Um, so, what's the principle? This is how the ion trap in the crystal works. I'm not a physicist, I don't understand most of this stuff. The only thing I understand is simply we have to excite the atom and somehow read out its state. They're just building hardware, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm already in the project since one year, and so I didn't manage to dig into all the details. Uh, another, techno another principle is uh, using uh, semiconductor uh, Joseph uh, junction. Uh, you also need to excite it, but you are using microwave microwaves, DC current, and uh, a magnetic field. And this uh, junction needs a uh, very low temperature, usually a few uh, a fraction of Kelvin, uh, to work. And uh, so I jumped too much. Where is this ion trap? Sorry, just skip it. Oh, and this is <coughs> how the ion trap works. I actually, the most of the electronics I built is for ion traps. Uh, you capture an ion in a, in yes i mean with his with his people who are using some of the hardware and so we are using they are, you, to uh, to trap an ion you need quite a lot of hardware and plenty of, plenty of optics so you need several lasers uh, to pump to cool it down to address to to excite to certain state you have to the other problem with ion traps is that you have to you have very, very precisely stabilized uh, frequency of the laser up to a few megahertz, and then you're able to electronically move the, fa the frequency of the laser by just 10, 10, 10 or 20 megahertz to, to, to go between, uh, between uh, states. So this, this equipment is quite sophisticated. Why am, why, why am I telling uh, this? Uh, because this this type of experiment requires very, very precise electronics. You need very good time synchronization between uh, excitation channels and readout channels. You need very good uh, DC accuracy, I mean, the, 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 the stability of the system. So it, it does not react to the temperature variations. Uh, it does not, uh, it's, it's insensitive to external uh, interference. So to, st to, to, to start with, you need uh, <coughs> several building blocks. This is uh, this is um, some screenshot of another presentation. I was I couldn't find the sources, so I simply placed it. It's, but it it shows uh, what's the how is the block diagram of typical trapped ion quantum computer. Actually, there's, there are several com there are several companies you probably have heard of. It's a D-Wave, the, the leader, but some physicists uh, don't believe it works. Actually, nobody proved it works. Uh, and it uses quantum principles because, as I know, uh, once they once they announce some uh, milestone achieved, some other smart guys rewrite algorithm on FPGA or on gra graphical card and uh, get the same performance. So, so the so this is so. But they are using. Yeah, no, no. It's there. On, it's there. It's based on semiconductor qubit, superconducting qubit. Uh, the guys from uh, which I cooperate with are from uh, IonQ. It's a it's a, it's a spin-off of 
uh, University of Maryland and several people from other places. So they are building uh, scalable computing on ion traps. So this is, but this is another story. Uh, uh, and this is, this is the D-wave claims so far. Yeah. Ion Q. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, nobody built f fully functional computer yet. Well, they. Okay. They, they 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 build a few qubits, and they are able to perform operation on a few qubits, but. Yes. Yes. Yes, IBM claims that they have 50. Yes, but to hold just qubits doesn't mean you can use it for useful for useful operations. They have even 400 <laughs> in in penning trap. I mean, yeah, no, no. Actually, to to do to do useful, to, yes, the coherence time is one thing, and but to to be, to do useful operations, we need thousands of millions of them. What do you mean easier to expand? I mean, you read, uh, it's written there that this system of this 50 ions is easier. No, no, I'm not talking it's easier, but this technology, the, I, uh, the ion trap, is easier to expand. I, am, I, I will tell why. Because in, for ion, I, uh, let me go back to this slide they swapped. This is the, prince, the, the block schematic of uh, superconducting quantum computer, which. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to compare ion trap with superconducting. So this superconducting, but I will answer. I will answer. I will answer in a moment. I will try to explain. In for quantum superconducting chip, you need as many vector modulators and RF chains as 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 uh, qubits so this is how it looks if 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 you have you have th hundreds of wires and for every qubit down there you need dedicated wire you dedicated filter dedicated modulator uh, dedicated uh, circulator which is bulky that's why this stuff is so big and you cannot expand it anymore because for each qubit, you need dedicated RF chain, duck, the digital to analog converter, analog to digital converter, and they didn't find a way how to address in, in matrix. Because the, the way to, to, to limit the number of channels, of electronic channel, is, channels is a number, is to, to build a matrix and place these qubits in the, in the matrix. But they didn't find so, so far, so they, they build more and more sophisticated chip, they put more channels to the chip, but there are limitations because you need to generate gigahertz scale signals and for this purpose to build to, to generate such a high frequency signal microwave signal you need plenty of power which you cannot place down there on a the chip you have to put the electronics outside and feed the rf signal down to the to the to the to the qubit and you and you need to stabilize this platform so there are several the cables are arranged in springs there are special there are several weights to dump oscillations and noise from outside and that's why this superconducting quantum computer so which uh, there, there are some proof of principles based on uh, several even on a thousand of qubits they ca it's very hard to expand to, to millions of them This is yeah, something like like meter right, from here to here. Yeah. 
uh, one magnetic core used, but they were built in matrices. So it, it, that was far easier than the. Um, but I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not that old. I don't remember that. It was in the 40s or 50s, and uh, ion trap, uh, ion trap ap approach. Uh, there are several approaches, and uh, one of them uh, is to build a penning trap. When you have, uh, you can have practically any number of qubits. But the only problem with uh, with uh, technological problem is to address them because they're rotating very fast, a few kilohertz frequency. So you can, so far, you are able to uh, form a crystal, cool them, and address rings. You can you can excite one ring, another ring, another ring, but it's it's you, at, at at this moment technology is not good enough to address individual atoms. So so this is this is this is the NIST is working on it. Uh, they are also using my equipment for that purpose. Another another very promising uh, uh, technology is using of usage of. Uh, matrix, uh, so-called CCD. Uh, I will tell you in a moment about it. And when I say easier to expand, I mean you don't need that many electronic channels. You, you, you are in in principle, you may work with one electronic channel and have thousands of uh, qubits. So there is no physical barrier to to expand to to bigger systems and to build a fully functional computer. You just need to have some kind of uh, some kind of scanner, some kind of uh, multiplexer, but you don't need to have as many electronic channels as as number of qubits. And uh, this ion trap uh, computer, or I'm just at the, at the moment there are no ion trap computers. Ion Q is promising to deliver into the market in, in five years, and they are working hard. They have uh, they have some venture capital behind. They did several founding. Uh, turns and uh, so they are. They, they claim they are close. I'm not. I'm, it's hard to judge. Uh, so uh, to build to 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 trap the ion, you need several systems. Vacuum is is is, is obvious one. Uh, you need a trap itself. You need a special laser, which is quite com quite expensive uh, to cool cool down because to cool down the ion you need a very very tight uh, frequency of the laser just the, the bandwidth of a few megahertz and the stability of, of a few megahertz and then you need uh, another laser to address uh, the, the qubit uh, you need a, you need a dedicated uh, electronics to generate the laser pa pulses on the lasers you need the RF to keep the qubit in a trap you need another microwave, to, uh, a microwave signal to, to, to tune the laser because the, 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 this is quite complex setup uh, to add the electrical signal to optical signal, to, to sum the two, to have the ability to precisely tune the laser because changing the, temp the variation of temperature of the laser is not fast enough. You need to do it very, very quickly. So that's why you need to somehow add, you have, you know, people are using optical modulators to simply sweep the frequency of the laser to just to address, to, 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 to excite uh, to certain state. And to control all this stuff, you need, you need electric hardware, um, generators, arbitrary waveform generators, pulse generators, and and the dedicated software, which is uh, and this uh, and this software used to to run the protocols. I mean, the protocol is not not like TCP/IP, but uh, but the sequence of, of operations to achieve a certain uh, atomic state and transition between states. And for this purpose, the electronics is needed. And so far, uh, there is no such a no such a control system which you can simply buy. I, I was visiting uh, a few labs at the University of Colorado last summer and in every lab I saw guys building their own version of arbitrary waveform generator, of DDS generator. They were building piezo drivers to control the uh, laser cavities. They were building their own uh, analog to digital converter because the one they found was not the one they needed. So. And every lab in the world is doing the same. They are building their own stuff. So instead of doing physics, they are, they are electronic engineers, and it takes 10 years to trap the first ion or to, to do some quantum operation on, on, a, on a superconducting qubit. 
Uh, some, most of the people are used custom of the shelf, shelf equipment from uh, Keysight, Tektronics, or other vendors. But the problem is with this equipment is that the, this, this is not real-time stuff. I mean, you need several milliseconds to talk to this equipment to capture the signal, which is far too much to do, for example, uh, to do, for example, laser stabiliz stabilization system. Uh, for ion traps, uh, the good thing is you, think you can already buy quite good, uh, quite good uh, stabilized lasers uh, from Toptica, for example. And the very nice thing about uh, ion, ion trap that you can build functional experiment on a bench. This size of bench is sufficient to build, uh, uh, not maybe computer, but uh, the setup which has uh, several qubits and you can play with them. And you can do it uh, for half million euro. And you can, uh, having such an ion, tra ion trap, you can do some physics. I, I was at the conference and the people were talking. Actually, there were several applications of um, ion, trap, ion traps, and uh, maybe 5% was quantum, computer, quantum computing. West, most of them was uh, time, time uh, references, uh, some uh, sensing, uh, some, of, some of people, some people, some groups who use, use this uh, ion in a trap to validate standard model. So there are many num numerous, numerous applications, and the quantum computing is uh, simply one of, one of many. Uh, so this is the idea how to, uh, how to scale the ion trap uh, to system to have multiple, multiple uh, qubits. So, so far, there are these Alina liner ion traps, but you cannot hold more than uh, 100 or so, or so qubits, and it's hard. Uh, hard to, it's hard to control. There are these 2D arrays, they are called CCD, I mean it's, it's, it's from charge, uh, charge uh, coupled yes, uh, devices that you have matrix, we have several fields, we have uh, electrodes applied so you can do shuttling. I mean shuttling means we can move these ions from one place to another place, for, for example from memory zone to processing zone and you can combine them and uh, I, I don't know how the physics works, I just see how, what the, these guys need to, to control it. So for example, if you have a, such an such a ion trap, for each of the electrodes you need dedicated electro electronic channel. Uh, but you, this, but the same, the same electronics goes to all, to all the, to, to all the ions trapped. So you actually don't need this multiplied by number of ions. The same with this trap. For this trap, it doesn't matter if you have one ion or hundred of my ions. You, you, you have, they have the same electronics essentially. You just, you just need a few more channels to, to, sh to shape a, a DC field, but otherwise it's, it's, it's scalable. But you cannot scale in one in linear fashion because you want to have interactions between uh, not neighboring atoms only, but between uh, more, more of them. So, another, but this, this process has some limitations. You cannot uh, hold more than 200 qubits. 100 or 200 qubits. So there are another ideas to couple them through op op photonic, uh, photonic fibers. The problem is at the moment that if you want to build a, a cross point switch like that one, uh, the, the efficiency of the switches is too, is too bad. Actually, you lose too much light, and you, for example, you need 10 photons uh, to, to, to get at the input to get one at the output because the transfer efficiency is poor. Well, you said the connectivity is actually important. That's why I want to control network topologies. Mm -hmm. I wonder, is it actually possible with? Uh, actually, it's you can. Uh, I mean, uh, to make it, uh, to make it. I, I mean, there are technological, uh, technological barriers so far. To make it uh, really scalable and big, you need to put to the chip. Because otherwise you would have a stadium size uh, uh, quantum computer when you have several optical tables connected fibers and this 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 this, this in principle should work. Oxford is going to build some, something like this. I'm actually actually not going to build. There are, there are some plans. Uh, they did some feasibility study that they would need some a few billion of euro billions of euro and to build several to multiply their system and connect with fibers. Because these fibers used in telecom, they are really good. They have very high, they have very high efficiency. Uh, but if you want to do it in a chip, 
So these fibers on a chip, they have very poor performance. So you need years to develop better performance. Actually, you, you get every year you have better and better. So simply you have to, if you take the more low to account, you need to wait certain amount of time. So, th so there's a chance that this technology would be, would be major and you could use it for this purpose. But so far, they, it's simply too bad. You lose, lose uh, nine in, uh, in 10 photons uh, on this interconnectivity matrix in a chip. So it's, it's hard, to, hard to control it. How to how to uh, how to achieve it? Uh, so this is this is photo taken at, at NIST. Uh, uh, this is some uh, ion trap somewhere down there. They are on the but downstairs on the bottom there are lasers. Uh, the, most of the optics is just stabilization of laser, just to 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 make this uh, to to add this RF field, RF frequency to the laser, to the laser frequency and to, to sweep this laser quickly. So 90% of this stuff is just, just provide the optics to, to excite or to read uh, the, the, the ion trap. The very nice thing about ion trap is when you build the experiment, you simply take your DS, uh, di digital camera, switch off all the lights, put it on the ion trap, take one minute exposure and you do a photo of your ion. Of your ion. So it's unlike in, in CERN that you wait years to, to Atlas uh, collaboration to, to publish results. You simply take your photo, your camera, mobile phone camera is not good enough, but DSLR camera is, is fine. So you take your Nikon camera to take a photo of you to see these ions in a trap. So it's a very cool thing. And uh, normally you use electron multiplied CCD camera to not wait one minute to just to have this, this readout in, in, one, in, a, in a second. So, so all this, so, so this, this ions were trapped by camera. So simply have a uh, very sensitive camera you can trap. And this is actually how you read this, how you read this, uh, the state, quantum state of the, of, the, of the atom, because you have to excite uh, using to, to certain state, and when it releases energy, it emits, emits a photon which you simply uh, acquire. And the problem is if you want to build, so, you, so okay, you have a, you are an institution, you build a lab, when you have all this fantastic equipment combined in some secret way, it took 10 years to, to connect all this stuff to make, the, to make this ion trapped, but and you publish some results. And okay, these results are very nice. You, you, said, you said you achieved, uh, for example, this, uh, uh, you built 50 qubits and you achieved, I don't know, the, the time of coherence of 10 seconds, everybody is excited, so another lab tries to repeat it. And it takes another 10 years to build similar setup, <laughs> yes, to, to, to repeat the experiment. So it's very tough to collaborate because ex equipment and the protocols and the software is so unique. So you, have, you take the protocol which somebody wrote and you have to implement on your hardware, on your software with your limitations, so it's really tough. So. So, and all this, all this box has unique interface. Some of them has, has, have, uh, are controlled from Windows machines, some of them from Linux machines, some of them have Linux embedded already, some of them are USB, uh, Wi-Fi, or many, all, all possible interfaces. There is no simple single standard. Of course, there are standards within measurement equipment, but, uh, okay, only big companies are somehow implemented. If you buy some, uh, I don't know, from some DDS generator from Zurich Instruments, they have own standard and own API, so you have to implement on your own. So, as I said, it's very hard to recreate the same conditions in other labs, and so that's why several labs uh, joined forces to build uh, unified control equipment. And uh, this is some, this is, uh, there are some other, other photos from NIST. Uh, this is the one on the, on, the, on, the top, on the bottom left. <laughs> it's probably from, from Fifth Element, from the film. Is this from Star Wars? Ah, maybe. I thought it was from... from, from uh, ah, okay, okay. I was, I, was, I was wrong. So this is an ion trap on the third, and there is some equipment. Uh, so there are DDS generators. Uh, actually, this one, this big box on the right, it's a, it's a prototype of, our, of, of my system. Uh, but before it was standardized. Uh, so this, this is uh, the solution, which is Arctic. Uh, it's an advanced real-time infrastructure for quantum physics. This is, well, that's why it appeared. 
So the several institutions, I will list them later on, uh, simply joined forces, put some money to build the equipment. But it works in such a way that not one lab is building all the equipment, but one lab is founding one board, another lab is founding one board, another one is, build, is, is, is founding software, another one is build founding gateway. I mean, gateway, it's a word we are using in, in this community. It means it's, gateway is actually the, Hardware which you describe by software. Actually, if you have programmable circuit, it's neither software, neither hardware, because it's a, it's a connection of the hardware within the chip. So we call it gateway, so don't be surprised if I use this word. It's, a, it's CERN invented this word, CERN scientists, and it's adopted somehow because it describes connections of gates. It's, it's a gate and where it means connectivity of the gates. So uh, most of the control systems are based on FPGA circuits because only with this technology we are achieve, able to achieve low latency. I mean low latency below one, one microsecond. So we'll read the result and you need to react within one, one microsecond. Uh, well, it's in the software it's really tough because uh, the I.O. operation in the computer ta usually takes 10 or 20 microseconds, so it's uh, hard to achieve uh, uh, that time. Another thing you need is uh, sub-nanosecond accuracy, I mean synchronization between channels. If you have several DDS channels, for example 20 DDS channels de delivering RF signal to the same trap, or a superconducting qubit, you need to synchronize them with some nan sub nanosecond, I mean sometimes 15 picoseconds. So it's uh, challenging, and this is time synchronization must be embedded to the roots of the system. If you have external devices connected by cable, it's very hard to, uh, hard to achieve it, because if you have one meter cable, temperature varies by two or three degrees, the time uh, different, the time, of, uh, the time of arrival changes by a few tens of picoseconds, so it's already too far. So within this Arctic, uh, we, there is a software which is written in Python, but Python is not fast. Python is just interpreted language. You, this is very, very, very. It's good. It's easy to uh, to learn. It's easy to everybody knows it. But it's really hard to uh, build uh, real-time systems. So the guys invented uh, some sub sub. Um, so they use the Python uh, lexics and uh, to describe hardware. So instead of forcing physicists to learn VHDL or Verilog languages. They simply use Python. You have the same language, the same formulas, but limited to certain to certain things which can be sent, which can be synthesized, and you see it's simply translated to FPGA to VHDL and then synthesized in in, 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 log, in logics. So once you, for example, describe your PID regulator, in, so you write it in Python and then it's implemented in the hardware just by connecting gates. Sorry. Actually, in, in FPGAs, there is no assembler. Actually, uh, the, uh, you don't have assembler, but you have a RTL language. So FPGAs don't work in a sequence. There is no operation after operation. You describe the flow of the signal. So it, seems it simply says uh, that you take one signal, the second signal, add them together, and produce first signal. It takes one clock cycle. Yes, or, or actually, it does not. In, in theory, it does not take any time. It, it's just zero time. In, in theory, it's a, it's, a, it's a question how fast uh, how, how how fast you clock it. If you do it asynchronously, you don't have a clock. You have just propagation of foot of electrons through the chip. So this you you describe it at such a low level. It's it's much. L so actually, in this VHDL, you can describe the processor and run software on it. It works in such a way. So so this is actually guys are doing. They simply in. Yeah, exactly. It's a good. It's a. It's your per. Yes. Exactly. And you can write such a numerical integrator in the, using just five lines of Python, and it's implemented as a gates, just a few gates, uh, see flip flops, and so actually what they do, they write in Python real-time computer core, and then they then write then run this Python script on this core. So they write, uh, run the Python code on a Python-described computer. And the nice thing is that, f uh, that the physicist, after reading through this documentation and uh, doing some Googling, is able to, to modify it without uh, deep uh, knowledge in, uh, in, in, in electronics, in computer engineering. 
So this is the software. Another, but they, they, will build the, they build the software and they use some, they collected some random boards from different vendors, put them together to put it in a big box and made it somehow running. But it was not scalable. If you wanted to build, big, build another box, then you had to build it from scratch, uh, get some company who is going to assemble it. And it, 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 was, it was tough because every time you had to take care about power supply, about cooling, about interfaces. So there are, so what, so there are standards. Standards like, for example, the type of one of the standards you have in your computer. It's a PCI. You simply buy a PCI from another vendor. You don't, if you buy a computer from your, for ASUS, you don't have to buy a PCI board from ASUS. You can buy from NVIDIA or from other company. So this is, that's, that's, the, that's the standards are for, just to, to, just to improve e a cooperation of, uh, ven of equipment from multi, multiple vendors. And the same we did in our case. We just put this, all this hardware to the standards. And uh, so, so far, we built over 20 different modules. Uh, which are based on two industrial standards. One of the standards is MicroTC.4, which was developed by DESI. It's a modular system which, uh, which is dedicated for radio frequency op operations. And another standard is FreeU Eurocrate, which is dedicated for, for some, not, not that fast, but it's cheap. While MicroTCA Crate is something like 20k euros, the FreeU Crate is 100 euros, so it's a difference. But you don't need this super sophisticated micro TCA with RF uh, synchronization for all the purpose. You need to synchronize, to put this, only the equipment needs some picosecond accuracy, but the rest of, most, most of the equipment is just switching off and off lasers, keeping temperature on the right level, uh, generating of DC field when you have, the mid, when accuracy or, or just latency of milliseconds is enough. So we combined these two standards, one low cost and one, uh, one expensive but uh, high performance, to, to, to implement all this, so all, this, all this hardware. So far, as I said, we have over 20 modules. The next, next 10 is in development. We want to actually address all needs of typical quantum applications. So the guy who, is, uh, want, who wants to build his own ion trap or computer or whatever, uh, based on any technology, because and the idea behind this module, behind this system is that if you have some strange physics, I mean, some you invent some new, completely new uh, way to trap ion or to to build a, a qubit, you don't have to build new equipment. You just replace only a little board which adapts the signal to your needs. You just just modify a single board which is hundred. Uh, dollars, uh, which is hundred dollars, and you simply don't have to build this complex, uh, rebuild this complex equipment. Uh, yeah, this, this is, yes, yes, actually, the first idea was to call it Quantuino, <laughs> to, to, to have, uh, to have, uh, to, to, to bet, let people better understand the idea, because it's, it's like Arduino, just take, you go to AliExpress and for three bucks you buy Ethernet interface, you plug and you download some code from GitHub and it usually works. If not, you just Google it and after 10, 10 minutes you, have a, you, have, you, you know how it works. My, my wife is able to do it, so, but he's, he's not a computer scientist. <laughs> so this is, it's really, really easy to, to, to build and many of this uh, control system actually use Arduinos. Yes, but, but the, the problem is that you don't have a box. You have just random board with stack of boards, and then you need a power supply. So people are using some mobile phone chargers, but they fail after, after a month or two of continuous operation because we're not designed to continuously do, do deliver power. Uh, they, they have some uh, shoebox uh, enclosures, some random one, and then you have some complete mess in a, in a lab. If something breaks, you have to find a guy who designed it, and, and if he is retired, then you are in trouble. So, so th that's why we want to base on the standards. It's slightly more expensive to adopt the standard, but, but after 20 years, when your power supply, supply fails, you go to the shop and buy it and plug it, it works, usually. It's also not working. Oh. When the NASA wanted to fire the engine on the Voyager 1, yeah? 
Yes, and, and they, it was working. Yes, who was able to? <laughs> yes, because it was done recently. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, when I was working at CERN, there was there were endless kilometers of cables, which they simply were cut at one end, and was passing through uh, through these uh, underground tunnels, and nobody touched them because they were, didn't know what the, what is this cable for. They knew it was cut from one side, but they didn't know where the other end is, and they nobody, nobody would try to remove it. Anyway, they were corroded in such a way that once you touch, they would simply break, because they were 50 years old. And there's plenty of equipment like this at CERN that uh, once you, for, for example, once I was, uh, I was, uh, I, 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 my, my colleagues came to CERN and I was showing them some equipment. And you have, a, you have a tunnel, cable tunnel, and there is some rack, and there is a chair just tilted by 40 degrees, and there is a power supply on this chair. And so I ask my colleague, why is it like this? Because it all works in this position. And it, it's there for years. <laughs> because nobody knows how to fix it. Because it was the guy who died years ago. So to, evo to, ev to avoid such a problems, CERN is also putting a lot of money and effort to standardize everything as much as possible. And now they, they have this open software, open hardware initiative, which we also joined. We, all this hardware we are building on CERN license and using CERN equipment, which they published. So most of the stuff, you simply take one piece of a hardware from one project, another from another project, and within one, ma one year we have managed to build 20 devices, just by reusing, uh, reusing existing uh, parts of, the, of designs. So there, this is our team. Uh, there are something like 50 people around it. Some of them are uh, putting money. Some of them are testing. Some of them are buying this equipment. All the equipment which, was, which I present, you can buy. So this is a difference between uh, another equipment, but because there was plenty of open source equipment which, which, were, which labs built, but hardly ever they published. But even if they publish, they don't publish all details, because they don't, they don't have time, they don't want, it takes some effort to publish and to document properly. So somebody can take it and produce and it works. And actually they, they, they use it, but they, the problem is if you want to correctly publish your results, you need to put some effort, but they want to do physics, not to, uh, to do electronics and, uh, uh, and uh, well, they usually don't have, they don't have industrial background, they are just scientists. So they just combine a few components, it works, I work, it's fine, it works, but it's not a product. If somebody else takes this design, produces it, and probably it won't work. Because in the meantime, they apply some patches. Don't write documentation, and then you fire a postdoc because postdoc is two or three years. Next guy comes and have to debug it. So usually write it from scratch. Because yeah, no yeah. Because there's a different model to sustain software and building the production stage. So I guess it's exactly similar. It's the same with electronics. It works in this certain case. If the temperature goes by five degrees, it probably will stop working or work and give in the, uh, 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 like some some results you don't want. So. And so the university, uh, Warsaw University of Technology, we are doing 95% of all the hardware, which we are going to show you. It's probably not the scale, which is interesting for, Sky, for, for Chinese guys. And uh, the know-how, which is this, this uh, we, need to co we need to collect guys from several disciplines of electronics. And uh, uh, it's a lot easy. You need to put some effort to combine them together. And the open source is the only way, actually, to collaborate. There were other ideas to build such a system, but they didn't make it open, so they failed. Because by the fact that we made it open, there are many people who are get attracted and volunteer to improve it. So once we publish some, uh, some uh, design, there are some people, random people, even from big uh, companies coming and say, oh, look, this resistor is wrong, replace with another one because you, you get some get the ringing or whatever. There are people, many volunteers, who are, nobody knows them. But every, since every piece 
little piece of code of the hardware is on the GitHub. Everybody can come, can criticize it. You are, we love if somebody criticizes, because in this way you, you are able to make it better. And you send you for, if you look the GitHub to the to this Arctic project, you have, uh, for example, 300 discussions under one topic, because many people are just want to, to, to the sharing their knowledge. So this 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 and that's why we managed to build 20 devices within one year. With with uh, actually there were just five hardware developers because we have very strong support from that from the from the community. Of, of great scientists, of there are some, some people from Keysight, from analog devices, who spend their time just helping us because they see that gives effect that this hardware is finally built, that you can buy it, then people are using it. It's not just a, a master thesis uh, board which goes final lens in the somewhere in a, in a drawer. Nobody is interested because this hardware is. This is example. This is how the system looks like. Uh, we use micro TCA. This is the crate. Micro TCA crate. This, A digital direct synthesis. It's a technology to uh, generate uh, and uh, to use arbitrary waveform generator. Actually, the DDS is a special case of arbitrary waveform generator. Actually, when you, yeah. <laughs> So let me. So if you don't understand something, because it's as uh, for hardware engineer, this is obvious. The same like if you say uh, if you write some your some strange uh, Greek letter, it's obvious for you, but for me, it's just Greek letter. Uh, so that's why that's why we are here. Yes. Yes. So if you don't. So so the, uh, why do we need the DDS? DDS it's a technique to generate any shape of the signal. DDS actually it's a it's a technology technology that you simply have a memory which you read row by row and send to the digital to analog converter. So you are able to generate sine wave or any 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 signal repetitive signal which you can you simply dis define samples the ve analog values I mean you define digital values which then are converted to analog values. And for quantum physics, it's very critical to, for example, have two tones, I mean, two sine waves mixed together when you can control uh, their phase relationship. And need to do it very quickly in a hardware. So that's why this arbitrary waveform generator is a technology, and you need to do it at 4 gigahertz. So what is 4 gigahertz? It's 4 gigahertz is it's a microwave region where most of the classical electronics doesn't work. I mean, you have the, you have this uh, field theory applied. So Ohm's law usually, I mean, it works, but it's not very useful. It's no the current. It's no more voltage multiplied by resistance because you, everything is complex. I mean, complex and I mean complicated, but also have a, uh, complex numbers involved. So you have uh, so the design of such a system is really really challenging, and you need to have knowledge from many fields to to, to make it happen. And uh, and we applied this uh, micro TC that creates. Actually, you buy everything from f from the from the vendor: power supply, controller, the crate, the fans, cooling, everything. You just build one box, one board. And we built such a board, uh, and to 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 be able to to control this, to generate this several complex waveforms at the same uh, multi uh, simultaneously with good timing synchronization. So the whole subsystem works that you have such a these big crates for this time um, critical uh, generation of the signals, and we have some we call it Castle box. I mean, these names comes from Russian lakes. Nobody I don't know nobody invented. There is a big uh, shitstorm at the at the GitHub. Why not to change this name to something which somebody is able to remember? Uh, there are some Russian uh, Russian programmers involved, so they probably they invented these names, but they are now they are changing to something uh, which at least. Uh, uh, for example, instead of this timer, we are going to a sampler because it does sampling, yes, or, or we, the, the board which does frame grab, uh, grabbing the frames from camera will be grabber, the names which some round names which tell something, not just uh, Metlina which doesn't say anything, it's some Russian lake. So, and, the, and, the, and then we end up with discussion, look what this Metlina is uh, all the time, when I simply don't use Metlina, I just use controller, <laughs> because it, it controls the the crate. So, so just we, now we are changing these names back to something which makes sense. But th these are old slides, so 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 this is that's why we. 
And uh, this is uh, well, hardware is one thing. Another thing is software. So there is uh, open source software based on Python. When you can, uh, there are several 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 tools within. It. One you use to build the gateway. I mean to compile this Python to hardware. Another one you build to you use to build the architecture. I mean compile several such a blocks into one uh, big the chip. Another piece you use to write uh, protocols. I mean, to the, to the sequences of the pulses and to uh, to, to control the qubits. So some of them you use to grab this, the grab this uh, CCD camera uh, results, and some of them you and you use to visualize data. So there are more and more institutions who use this software because, well. It's not that it trivial to, 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 to get, dig into it because it's open source and usually it's written by physicists by themselves. So there's some documentation lacking. You have to write on a forum to get some. But usually you are able to get what you want and it's much faster than to write yourself because uh, there are guy groups uh, in Korea who are using it recently. Within one year, they were managed to dig into it to, to, to write, to make their ion traps trapped. And these are some modules we developed. Uh, so this is this the most complex, the most expensive eight-channel uh, generator. Uh, there are some strange names like GASD 204B. Uh, it's a 10 gigabit protocol used to 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 send data. Actually, to control this board on the on the right side, we, you need to push something like 256 gigab. Uh, bytes per second of data to run this DDS. The, the micro TCA crate it's quite unique because it allows to achieve good performance in digital domain, but also good performance in our analog domain. So from from side from from front side you plug these analog modules and this uh, I mean the digital modules I mean digital modules produce plenty of noise interference etc. So to, so to meet and it's not a good place to put analog electronics when you, you need to have very low noise signals. So the guys from Desi invented the way to plug the analog modules from the rear side, and they have dedicated backplane that connected that transport these analog signals and dedicated backplane from front side to transport these digital signals. So there are some modules which we which we build. They are just renders, but on the GitHub you can see real photos. Well, I, this, 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 this is how it looks like, the connectivity of these two boards. So there are 14 layer of, layers of signal, and uh, if you want to do it by hand, you would fail. Uh, actually, you could do it 50 years ago when you had hundreds of uh, uh, components on a board. This is 2,000 components. And the problem is that if you want to have, for example, this signal going from this CI through this connector to this, and this is 10 gigahertz. So you have a so you have a microwave. You have a you have a uh, just waveguide, and uh, you, to do it, you have to f solve several field theory equations. Uh, take into account that you have a connector here that is that, that this connector uh, is not uh, is not impedance matched. So there's no way to do it by hand. You have to use tools. And there are tools, you simply do the simulation, do analysis. So actually you're able to simulate uh, the board before it's produced, to, to measure its results before it's produced. This, this is quite expensive software. It's something like a million euro per license. Uh, but we have at some serious discounted university. We paid 30% of it. And uh, with these tools, it's from mental graphics, you are able to get this board. Like we designed the board. We built 10 pieces at once because everybody wants to have it. Actually, they, all of them, there were some little tweaks to, to do some resistors with wrong value or something like this. But we managed to, run, to make 10 pieces running and they were shipped and they are working in the labs. Of course, there, are some, uh, some, there will be some changes, but. Uh, it's 20 centimeter, up. To, it's 20 centimeter size. So this is the most complex stuff. We built several other boards uh, for this a controller, for the crate. Uh, this is the the equipment which uh, which is in free crate, which you can buy it from one of the companies. It's from the Techno System, uh, who simply decided to put their own money, invest money to. Uh, to take this open hardware, produce, put a 
place to the box, give a warranty and uh, and uh, sell. Uh, so this this looks like like a, like a custom of the shelf equipment where like you buy from Tektronics or other uh, vendors. Uh, so this is another 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 equipment which is much lower cost. One module is something like 50 bucks, so 50 euros. So it's it's not so it's uh, affordable. Uh, if you compare to other ones which you want to buy from uh, from Keysight, which you pay ten, ten times more. This, this can be low, such low cost because most of the R&D is already done by a community. So the company doesn't have to invent, uh, invest millions to develop, design, debug this stuff because it works such a way. The university found some board, we develop this board, they help us develop this board, then we, we produce this board, we ship 10 boards to other universities and they do debugging. They see if the board fits their purpose. We, we do only smoke tests to see if the smoke does not come after switch, we switch, switch on the power and uh, we test basic functionality, but most of the detailed testing is done by universities. When you buy equipment from, for example, Tektronics, there are also bugs. But once you discover bug, you don't know what's inside because you don't have documentation. You have to, you have to describe how this bug looks like, send the note to the Tektronics and they eventually will look, uh, look at it and to, if it's possible today, they will send you a software update. If not, they said, okay, you have to live with this. In this case, this guy say, okay, this doesn't work, just this, uh, but they're able to, to find what's going on. Because they, because they are not only physicists, but they're also quite good engineers. So they're not able to replace one resistor. And that's why they are able to, we are able to develop, do the cycle, the old cycle of development of one board within two or three months. Normally it takes years. That's why we are building, we are able to move so quickly with the design because it's open and because there are so many people with different fields, from different fields who are, are contributing to it. So this is uh, how it looks like. So, well, well I didn't finish it <laughs> actually, I didn't need it. So, so the equipment which we built is, uh, satisfies both ion trappers and superconductor qubit guys, and it's open source, uh, it's, uh, but there are many other open source hardware designs, but there is no commercialization institutions uh, behind. That's when they failed. Because the scientists built something, but nobody wanted to take responsibility for producing that. In this case, we have a one and two companies, we have actually two companies that uh, they want to commercialize, they want to put invest their own money to change these prototypes to products. But it's, it's, it's much easier for the company to, if you have a, 50 working prototypes around the world, quite well debugged, so usually all you need to do is to produce it, to produce a batch to see, to confirm it works and do some tweaking and that's it, and you have a product. If you have a just prototype you found built by some amateur on a GitHub based on Arduino, I know I'm not, I have, don't have anything against Arduino, but, it, it, but the Arduino effect is something that somebody without knowledge can build something and claim it works. So this is the, the problem. So then the company needs to invest plenty of time and money to make it working. But this is the other case, because we have great scientists, engineers who develop and debug it. And there is a company where you can buy. So the rest of the community can simply go to the web shop, to the company, and click and buy it, and get it without two weeks. So uh, that's it. Thank you. So other questions? historical remark about the 65 years ago Lyman Spitzer had in, suggested that you can use a thermonuclear explosion to generate electricity and he produced the idea that we can build a thermonuclear reactor which will generate electricity and make a project for it it was called the sterilator yeah. uh, well we are still in the same phase. There are millions of the operations all over the world trying to build this device. The physics is pretty good. I mean, we know this is possible. However, it is not possible to make it. So I had a, some kind of a feeling that the quantum computing is in the, exactly the same phase. We it have is. many devices yeah, yeah. Where which, we, we, which in some sort works. Right? 
Even in Warsaw, we, we in some sense have a nuclear, thermonuclear reactor which is working. There's a plasma focus in the micro laser laboratory next to. On the mobile. I have not mentioned the institution because the rectors of that institution have been just today arrested. So <laughs> it's simply better. To now, now, why? if Pin uh, meets. Accelerator jest. Yes, but exactly this project has already, I think, revolutionized the way we think about hardware construction for any project, not only for quantum computer. And this is absolutely new. I want to uh, somehow put your attention to the fact that we are observing a birth of a new paradigm how complicated front line electronics hardware is being designed, built and tested with the help of community and how it is made sustainable from the market point of, point of view. So at the very end, of course, it has to pay back. So how this open hardware initiative makes sense for companies to support it exactly because they get uh, somehow cheaper expertise the, the, the expertise at the lower cost but also for customers because finally they pay less for standardized project product and this is something completely incredible and that's an example of a real revolution with with uh, w which will reshape really the economy i think especially the economy which is based on, 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 on this high-tech products. I also want to make two comments, please. First of all, NASA is not stupid. They are gathering together vo Voyager personnel. They are all retired, but they regularly gather them together for review of the mission. And so, unless tho those people naturally disappear from kind of pool of humans, uh, NASA still uh, collects and maintains their uh, competence, so to speak. So it's not an accident that they were able to fire those en engines. It's not like, like they, they reminded themselves that there are some engines on, on thrusters on this Voyager after 37 years. No, for all those years, every half a year, the Voyager engineering group uh, met at NASA and uh, uh, reviewed the state of the mission. And another thing is that you mentioned this Arduino effect. I mean, I wouldn't be so uh, negative. Arduino is there to teach people electronics. Yeah, yeah. Basic, so we, we are using Arduinos as well. To, to somehow teach them the attitude, teach them what you can do, how uh, people who do electronics think, and then they should join a good faculty of electronics, learn how to work, then come to your group and do it I wanted, wanted to state that the, this Arduino effect is, means that there's plenty of creepy software and hardware on an on a, on a, on a open source uh, uh, resources, and that's it. Uh, there's not, and Arduino is a, it's a, it's just a platform. You can use it better or worse. We are using a regular Arduino because you can, it's good for quick prototyping. And you can also use it for production code. It's not it's just a it's just a way, it's just standard ceiling, which is just the way how you how you build the stuff. It makes things happen very very quickly. And so probably there would be some physicists which will simply misusing our approach to do some creepy research. Uh, but okay, it's it's, uh, it's there is place for such a people too. Uh, but uh, there are many beautiful things which appear thanks to Arduino. For example, all this inter Internet of Things could really work because there are endless implementation based on Arduino. So this Arduino really, so really move, rule, rules the world of, of this embedded, embedded stuff and more and more companies are adopting their boards to Arduino. So if you buy a board from Texas Instruments, there is a big chance that it will be Arduino compatible. 
before, it was just Texas Instrument Standard. Yes. So most of the vendors of semi if you if they, if you if they for example release new um, sensor, for example temperature sensor or just acceleration sensor, they usually give demonstration board based on Arduino. So you can simply take it, plug it in Arduino, get some code, and it works it after 10 minutes. So this is good, cool stuff. I like to have the same in, in instrumentation. Actually, CERN started all this initiative because CERN, uh, the main problem of CERN instrumentation is that it's old. I mean, these experiments last 50 years. And within these 50 years, most of the manufacturers who were producing this electronic stuff for, for example, proton synchrotron were already gone or where they were bought by another company, so just disappeared, or they just uh, discontinued their product. So, so, they, so they, they have to re re replace plenty of equipment every 10 years, because it fails. You cannot produce electronics. Of course, Voyager is another story, where it works 50 for 40 years, but the electronic which goes to space is 100 times more expensive than the industrial electronics. So you certainly cannot afford having such a reliable, such a reliable equipment. And uh, so uh, that's why CERN invested quite a lot to, the, to this open hardware. So CERN pays companies to develop equipment. So the company get paid for what they do. Then they release to public. And then CERN calls another company saying, guys, here's the documentation. We, we want to have 100 pieces produced. And uh, some companies are sending offers, CERN selects ones which are the best price or quality, and then CERN makes sure that he gets what it, it, it wants. He has it cheaper than normally would have, so it's, since it's public money, so they, so they have to take care about this public money, but there is a community growing around. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, if, oh. if not, then thank you very much. Thank you.